Good day, this is The Hawk. I want to talk to you today about Andrew Hanukkah. This gentleman grew up in South Africa, married a young lady, had five children, and went to Mozambique. He lived there for 31 years, fishing off the coast, surveying the coast, and building up a few companies, and supplying fisheries, helping out the tourist industry. But in his later years, and this is after helping the Mozambique people with his wife as a nurse, in his later years, he was attacked, shot, arrested, released, re-arrested, and accused of terrorism. He was taken away, and his family never saw him again. This is their story. And we want to get to the bottom of why he was murdered and falsely accused of being a terrorist. Begin. Andre Hanekom was one of three children. They lived in Nelspreet in South Africa. His family was highly respected. His grandparents were governing Map Mapumalanga district. And they were well known. During the depression years that hit in 1926, Andre Hanekom's mother had soup houses that helped the hospitals in many more emergency matters at the time. Andrea Hanukkah's parents, as we said before, lived in Nelspreet and they had a business there. They had all the school buses in Nelspreet. They were well known and respected people. Because of the respected family name that his grandparents and parents had, he had taught his children that you have to look after your name. He had a saying, it takes a lifetime to build a name and a day to lose it. How ironic that he was murdered by being falsely accused. Andre Hanukkah was an entrepreneur. He was always busy with new projects and ideas and even before he moved to Mozambique, However, one day as a young man, he went to visit a friend's house, at a friend's house, and they were having a barbecue or a braai, as they would say in South Africa. And he met a young lady who was also visiting, and her name was Francis. He had a beard at the time, and the joke was that he looked like a wild man. Funny enough, this story was told many times. Andre and Francis became inseparable, had an amazing young life. They were always out on bikes, went on adventures with their dog named Sandy. They say Sandy even had a helm. Would sit between them when they were on these trips, these adventurous trips. They got married after a year and had five kids not long after. They were called the A-Team because it was tradition in the family for generations. This tradition was that the first name of all the children had to start with A. So there was Annette Francis, Andre Machta, Amanda, Andre Meyer, and Arno Petro Petros. As a young man, Andre's memories was with his father as he went on adventures all over South Africa and Namibia and many other places. Some of his fondest memories were that of fishing in Mozambique. He wanted to have the same quality of outdoor life with his family that he had, so he could spend time together and experience this life, lifestyle of adventure. So Andre and Francis decided to move to Mozambique in 1992. This was just after the war had ended. Andre started a tourism industry with fishing charters and then lodging and hotel projects. 
He was looking for the ideal place to develop and did surveys for his own, for this along many places along the south of Mozambique. Mozambique was just starting to recover from the war of 25 years and the tourism was not ideal then as the roads were still unsafe, many places had landmines and it was dangerous to travel on these roads because people got shot. This made him consider other projects that could work for that time that Mozambique was recovering. Francis Hanukong was an ICU high intensive care nurse. She was contacted by the UN and offered to help put up a first clinic in Mozambique. This was after the war ended in 92 and the peace treaties were signed. Francis agreed to move to Maputo and work with a team putting up a clinica, Cruz Azul, in Maputo. Francis also ran the division of Deming that trained over 700 paramedics in Mozambique. They demined most of Mozambique between 92 and 1994. Francis Hanukkah was well known in Maputo due to a medical background and because of this the Vice President of Mozambique Marcelo da Silva de Sotos also asked Francis to personally look after his wife who was terminally ill with cancer. Francis Hanukkah fondly spoke of her and also said she was a remarkable person, strong through it all, unfortunately she passed away. Andre Hanukkah saw a need to export fishery products so as the demand was there at the time he decided to go into partnerships with another company and they started the survey of the coast of Mozambique. This was to find an ideal location that had crabs, crayfish, prawn, tuna and much more. The surveys were in the entire coast of Mozambique from Maputo all the way to the north of Mozambique around 2000. 800 kilometers. South Africa even used Andre Hanekom's old maps that he had surveyed from 1994 onwards. Andre Hanekom's knowledge of the coast of Mozambique was of great value. Andre mostly traveled by sea as the roads were severely damaged in the wartime. Some of these paths traveled by roads when they launched boats and surveyed the coast all the way up was done so as to find an ideal location for business. It took almost three weeks, about 20 to 25 days from 1994 to 2000 before the new roads were built to arrive in the north of Mozambique Palma. Today it takes three to four days to travel to the north of Mozambique. At the time there was a large, there was a barge boat, livable container, house on, this barge boat was used for the business projects. It was mainly used in the north of Mozambique to survey and it was done on long distance trips also to the islands. Andre also had smaller boats. Striker 1 and Striker 2, there were small ski boats used for these runs and small logistics to the north. They still have some of these boats today. Andre and Francis set up a business called Willow in the north of Mozambique. Francis helped with the business as well. The two younger boys lived with Andre and Francis on the barge boats on the islands and their three daughters lived in boarding houses and boarding schools in South Africa and later would travel up in the school holidays and stay on the islands or on the livable barge with their parents. Andre Hanukkah was running the entire operation with these boats and uh, with these with the boats and island for the business. Francis managed the medical care for all the staff of the business and other departments of the business 
She noticed that the locals of the island were desperate need for medical supplies and help. So she started a mobile boat clinic to help the locals on the island. The people also needed water and this was arranged to bring water with the barge boat to the islands for the local communities. The kids still remember fondly of being stuck in the mud in Francis's boat when the tide ran out and they were caught in the mangroves and they would go looking for crabs that were so huge half the size of they, what they were. It was a skill to catch them according to the children. In 1997 Unfortunately, the other partner of the company tried to remove Andre Hanukom with means of corruption and fraud. However, Andre and Francis fought this case in court for, year, for a year and won the case alone. And this was the biggest case, one of the biggest cases in North, North Mozambique until today. Many police and government officials were fired and jailed in the North, even all the way to Maputo. People knew that Andre and Francis did not give up easily, but stood for what was right, and especially after their good name was smeared by the partner. This was one of the main reasons that they fought the Willow case to the end. With no help, only the two of them, they trudged through a lot of intimidation, threats, and false accusations, and won. Their name was everything. They did not stop until it was cleared. The police and government also knew that the Hanukkahs were uncorruptible and were honest people that stood their ground. However, after the Willow Company was closed, Andre and Francis then opened a new company and continued the fishery and export line for a while. The logistics was just too difficult then and all the products had to be flown to Maputo and then agents had to send it out to clients and again corruption this was a big problem Andre and Francis then returned to tourism and did fishing charters and then started an island project and this was taken by corruption Andre and his wife decided to just walk away they did not want to go through another case of similar to the Willow case so, Andre and Francis then started a lodge on the other side of the Bay of Pamba. While he was developing this plan, starting up a new charter business, the tourist industry was booming also. Andre and Francis met a gentleman they thought was a tourist, but later found out he was a developer from Oman. Francis gave him a lift in their truck and later in the week he came to visit Andre and Francis at their home. He then spoke to Andre and Francis of his new project, a hotel and resort he wanted to start in Pamba and on the islands. Andre assisted him and showed him areas and the gentleman then found an ideal location for a five-star hotel to build. Once the hotel was finished, the owner of the hotel visited Andre and Francis again and asked Andre if he would run the fishing development de department for the hotel. Andre agreed and worked for the hotel, running the big game fishing department. After some shuffling happened in departments, the managers chose not to keep Andre. And the owner of the hotel found out later that Andre was not there and then flew in to speak to Andre. And then they agreed to go into a partnership in a luxury yacht that was bought for a private client of the hotel. This was a very successful business from 2007 until 2011. Then the boat was sold due to a new project they would start. The owner of the hotel offered Andre an opportunity to start a new business venture in Oman with private boats and he would also wanted to build another resort. This unfortunately stopped due to the conflict that happened in Libya. And they were waiting for this conflict to stop. About this time, 
Andre Hanekong operated private boats for the hotel. He did most of the oil field shallow water surveys and this is how Andre started to work for the oil companies. When the boat was sold from, new, the, from the new Oman business venture, this did not go through and the oil company asked Andre to work for them and ran the small boat operation in Palma. This was in 2012. The governor of Palma recommended once the president of Mozambique that he should go fishing with Andre. This was when the president was visiting Palma and had a fishing trip booked with a private boat. The governor knew Andre and had, had a good name and was well known for his knowledge of the coast and the best fishing areas. The president was so impressed with the trip he invited Andre for drinks just to talk about the fishing and how Andre got to his knowledge of northern Mozambique coast. The president, Cristiano, was a very down-to-earth person and loved the outdoors as well. Francis then opened a clinic and most of the local people could not afford the medicines or the medication. All the appointment fee of 5 MZ or 50 MZ. She did not charge them. If they didn't have money, she had enough coming in from the other foreign and local people from Palma and also around from Barra in Tanzania. People arrived from very far to come and see her. The queues of the people daily waited there for consultation so long that they built a makeshift roof along the road they went out of their property. This was because Francis was doing this alone and people did not want to lose their appointment. Francis was loved by the people and they called her Mama Medica. People just refused to not pay even when they didn't have the 50 MZ for the consulting. They would bring ducks, chickens, beans, rice things that they had from the farm to, to pay her. This was the most remarkable thing they witnessed. How truly amazing the people of Mozambique are. And they offered what they had. And they were always happy, even with the little. But unfortunately, Francis got very sick and had to stop due to health reasons. These two people, did some amazing selfless things for the people of Mozambique, went through trying times with many partners, corruption, but in their later years they got into our partnerships again with an American gentleman and another gentleman, a Mozambique partner. However, there was conflict, accusations, and many other things. During this period, Andre Hanukom went to the bank one day. He was followed. He was shot. He managed to get to a hotel. He was arrested, taken to court, found not guilty and released only to be re-arrested by the military for false accusations of terrorism. Andre Honeycomb was never seen again. Sadly, since then, their business has been taken over by the partners. There is conflict between the partners. Francis is very ill. But more to follow in the next video about this amazing family and what has tragically happened to them and how we need to get to the bottom of this murder and why was Andre Hanukkah murdered for terrorism that he was falsely accused of. This is The Hawk. I hope you enjoyed that story. This story spans over 31 years 
of a great man and his wife. Get ready for part two. But what happened to Andre Hanekom last year? And what has happened since? And how everything they have worked for has fallen apart and people are trying to take away their, what, what they built. We need to get to the bottom of who falsely accused Andre Hanekom, who, who set this up, who got the government involved and why. Hopefully we can interview the rest of the family and the partners of this business and get to the bottom of what really happened to Andre Hanukkah. The story revolves around terrorism, corruption, money laundering, partners, businesses, the Mozambique coast, the war in Mozambique, many many other things complicated but our main aim is not to waste the memory of Andre Hanukom but find out why they murdered him thanks for listening please subscribe to my channel please hit the like button and share don't forget to sign the petition for South Africa for sanctions I appreciate everything you guys are doing for my channel take care Wait for the second chapter in this story. So